I still find it funny that there, there's been people that think that Chainsaw Man is, is you know, gonna be nothing but action and gore and references to, you know, uh, Denji wanting to grab titties. It's been, well, that on top of a lot of psychological, like, stuff, like, just absolutely well-crafted into the series on top of a magnificently structured villain that is Makima. I think Makima's character has been so well done and so built up over the course of this series, and at the same time, like, she's a character you can really like as a bad guy, but at the same time, you're gonna hate her because, obviously, like, what she does in the series, and especially this chapter. I think up until recently, you could have still really loved Makima, and, and you know, still could have been really, you know, chill and, and happy with, uh, you know, with her character, her capabilities, and really, like, what she does in, uh, you know, throughout Chainsaw Man. And now it's just, like, you, like, I, I really like her as a villain, but I hate her for what she's done. It's, it's like, a really hard spot, because, like, you know, you can, you can like a bad guy, even if they're evil, but, I mean, you still gotta realize, like, yeah, at, at the end of the day, they're still bad, and even if you like them, you're gonna want to see them defeated. And you're gonna want to see, you know, the characters eventually overcome them and see how exactly they fall. And this chapter definitely, definitely has that set up and has me excited to see, you know, how that's gonna go down. Like, Mikima is not somebody that we need to stay after, you know, a, a, a good period of how she's gonna be the antagonist. Because Fujimoto has said that uh, the the gun devil stuff is like one th it's it's pretty much like he called it that whole portion up until recently like one arc one of its own thing and then he said there was going to be kind of like three arcs of that so probably like we're at the moment unless he decides to extend it about a third of the way into the series and now going into like makima being the the villain i like it, it's hard, because like I said, I really like Makima, in my opinion. I think in Shonen Jump right now, she's the best villain that they have. The other one that I really like is Dante, but I think Makima is just the way that... Initially, you didn't think she was a villain. She's been there since Chapter 1, and then just like bit by bit, we've really just like... Uh, you know, people have really just had the suspicion. It's like, is this chick actually like on their side? Like, is she going to, uh, you know, turn on them at some point? And... Well, right now, uh, absolutely. Like we're we're not in a we're not in a position anymore to like speculate whether or not Makima is bad. Makima is definitely an antagonist. She is a villain. Like how like what reason her or like what exactly her reasoning is? We don't know yet. But like I don't think anybody's gonna look at Makima and think, oh, she's a good person. It's like no, you've done a you've done a lot of bad stuff that the fan base is not gonna be too happy about. It's like we're I don't think any of us are, like, after this chapter have been like, okay, she's doing a good thing. It's like, no, we can like her as a villain, but <laughs> this shit was painful. It was just absolute depression. And, like, it's it's funny how Chainsaw Man, like, at, at the start you think, oh, you know, it's a lot of gore, action, badass stuff. And there's a lot of that in there. But, like, the overall stuff for Chainsaw Man, the themes and whatnot have been, like, people have made jokes of it, but it's true. It's It's, like, pain and suffering, like... The characters, they get you attached to them, they get you to like them through pretty understandable and well-placed kind of, like, setups. And then, kills them off in such a painful way and makes you go, like, at the same time, it's like, wow, that was cool, but, like, it's rough seeing these characters go. And I, I, I'm, I'm gonna miss all of them, and I'm not, there's still, like, ones that we could see potentially come back and see potentially, like, you know, set up for more, like, uh, obviously, like beam violence any any of the devil like all oh, the fiends but you know their devil origins are still technically not dead we don't know if they're going to be the same if we see them again like we don't know if we see the blood devil is it going to really be power or is it going to be you know the, the the blood devil as it was originally because you know we know that they don't re really retain their memory they only have like small like tiny little fragments in there so like we're in a spot that it's such a strange setup that, like, Fujimoto has laid out for us. And, you know, I don't really know what he's going to do. I'm really excited to see what he's going to do. But it's like, how is how is Denji going to fight back against Makima from all this? Like, this is such a, a weird chapter. And even after last week as well. Like, Makima killing power. Uh, power, and obviously, like, the, the Blood Devil is back in hell. And then, like, immediately afterwards, she just shuts the door. And Denji's just like... 
uh, like beside himself over this. Like he doesn't. He looks like he's not even sure if, if what's going on is real. Like he's still got uh, Power's blood on him. He just doesn't really know how to process this. And when he's talking to McKee about it, she just starts laughing and she reveals her plan. And her plan. It's something that, you know, makes a lot of sense as, as what we know in the series. But the question is why? Why is she doing this? Why is she like this? What is what is up with the chainsaw that all these characters want to, you know, want to take him? What's going on with that? Because, like, we find out she she knew about the contract with Pochita. Like, she even knows him by name and stuff. And she's, like, talking about how, like, oh, you know, it wasn't a promise you made to Pochita. You know, Pochita wanted to see Denji's dreams, wanting to fill his life and live happily. She's, like, saying it was a contract, which I, I think anybody really understanding, like, how the series work was able to kind of figure that out later, or early on. But, like, we don't know why the gun devil was after the, the chainsaw. And for a while, I've had the suspicions that the gun devil was actually, like, in a good way for the, the chainsaw. Like, or unless maybe that's what Makima's doing. Like, I, I think one of them, it's more towards helping the chainsaw, like, setting him free. Because I think the chainsaw might have had some important role in hell the you know to send like devils back over or something uh who knows exactly what it is because we, we know from the angel that the last thing that he, you know they remembered is that engine sound from you know denji you know revving up his chainsaws and stuff so it's like well how is that gonna you know be the reveal like because i i personally think the gun devil was an ally of the chainsaw i i've mentioned it before i don't know if anybody like has seen the sh uh, movies and the shows. If you've ever seen Evil Dead and Ash vs. Evil Dead, Army of Darkness and stuff. Because Fujimoto is like a big movie guy. If you've uh, read Fire Punch, like his previous series, he's like a big film guy. Like he really likes movies. He's a very weird dude. I think I, I think it makes sense why he would like stuff like, you know, Evil Dead and Ash vs. Evil Dead and stuff. And the main character in that, um, he loses... An, if you've never seen the movies, I'll just TLDR. With no, no real spoilers, but just a little bit. The main character... Um, at one point loses, he has to cut off his hand, and he gets a, he, he pretty much makes an attachment and has a chainsaw put on there, and then his other weapon is a shotgun. So, Denji, you know, with the chainsaw, having the chainsaw arms, and even in the first chapter, like, fighting the zombies and stuff, and, like, how gory it is, is, is if you've seen the series, you know what I mean, like, it, it's very in that same kind of tone. You know, uh, the main guy just it bloody, bloodily ripping through all of these, uh, you know, zombies and stuff with a chainsaw. It, it, it's very much like it. And Denji actually has a lot of weird traits that you wouldn't think would be on a Shonen main character. And that's kind of how, you know, uh, Ash is in Evil Dead. He's a, he's a very weird main character. You wouldn't really expect it because he's kind of like... He's kind of like a dipshit. He's kind of like a, in a lot of ways, he's dumb, but he can, you know, he pulls through and he's able to do good things in in, in the end. Like, any, he, he's kind of desensitized by, you know, uh, people dying and stuff around him in a lot of ways. Um, but obviously those close to him too, um, you know, can still get to him kind of like Denji. And I, I think that because of like the connections that I, I believe that I can see between the author, what I think is, you know, some of the inspiration for the series and what we have in Chainsaw Man, I think the Gun Devil was an ally to the Chainsaw, um, you know, back in hell. Who knows exactly what it is, but Makima wanting to break the contract with, uh, between Denji and Pochita, it, it's clear, similar to the Devils that have gone after him before, it's not Denji specifically they're after, it has to do with the Chainsaw. And the Chainsaw's mystery, obviously, like, being a big thing in the series, you know, makes you wonder, like, what exactly is it going to be, you know, like, the the big reveal? Like, what about the chainsaw is, like, this big enticing thing all these other characters are going after? And then it's led Denji to, like, this horrible level of, of just agony and suffering. Because she's, like, talking about, like, Mikima's just discussing, essentially, like, doing some big puppet master 4D checkmating stuff of, like, explaining how when she found Denji... She wanted to break the contract, but instead of just like, like, okay, how do I break the contract? How do I, you know, how do I pretty much take away somebody's will to live and stuff in order to do it uh, from somebody that doesn't really have anything? So she decided to make him happy. She gave him a job. She gave him money. She gave him good food. She gave him essentially a family with Aki and power and then took it all away from him. And then she's like saying how, oh, you know, uh, any anybody that you, you know, could build a bond with in the future that I'm just going to kill. Like, she's just pretty much laying it out there that she will prevent him from ever really being happy and tearing down anything that he ever 
tries to construct in a happy life and it's really dark and like she's laughing while she does it she's like amused and then she's like explaining also that she knows that denji's dad didn't kill himself like it's it's revealed that it's not that denji's dad committed suicide it's denji killed him in an act of self-defense while his like you know dad was drunk and you know uh, potentially was going to kill him and for the longest time i thought pochita was saying don't open the door like it was gonna reveal like his true form or something like maybe it would you know hurt denji somehow like maybe he didn't want denji to see what he really looked like because from denji's denji's point of view he knew pochita as like this you know cute little chainsaw puppy and maybe you know it reveals like he's actually just some horrible creature i'm i'm still hoping like a chainsaw cerberus considering that he's supposed to be like some um like if he's supposed to be some almost guardian of hell or something kind of like set up but also the three chainsaws maybe you know three heads kind of like cerberus i don't know um it's something like that it's it's a big mystery of, you know, what's coming up. But, like, I, I thought, oh, well, maybe Pochita didn't want Denji to see what was behind the door because it had something to do with Pochita and, you know, what he didn't want Denji to see personally about him. But it's actually what he was protecting him because it was a repressed memory that Denji locked up in his mind and Pochita didn't want him to see that. He didn't want him to, to relive and remember that he's the one that killed his dad and put him in that position. And it's... It's, it's so painful, man. It's like, and Makima's like saying, oh, you know, somebody like you d doesn't deserve like a normal life, right? And you just see like in his mind, Makima talking to the child Denji and, and just absolutely like tearing into his psyche. And it's, ah, it's, it's so sad to see Denji uh, like pretty much forfeit his, his, like, you know, his, his want to live almost. Like, we don't know how if Denji's going to be able to like pull through. I assume so. He's the main character and stuff. But, like, how is he going to manage to, you know, to overcome this? How is he going to defeat Makima? How is he going to get back to a spot where he can live again? And I, I, I really, really like Chainsaw Man. It's definitely one of my favorite series in Shonen Jump right now. Like, the only series I would say that I like more than Chainsaw Man is Black Clover because Black Clover is much more further progressed and there's, you know, a lot more going on in the story on a large... On a, more like world building and you know the a, a scale of just more expanse because it's like three times longer the currently than chainsaw man but like chainsaw man is able to hit in so many ways i think that other shonens haven't generally been able to do in comparison just because it it doesn't follow the setup of a lot of shonens and i i do personally think there's a lot of shonen tropes that i, I think are really well done even if they're you know the same one like tournament arcs and stuff powerful really old uh, you know grandpa kind of guys stuff like that can still be very often used but still be really good but then it's how the authors take those and do them differently that i've always really liked the most and i i think though that when you have series like chainsaw man and even if you're, there's stuff like something like black clover that i i think stands out on its own is able to still do you know specific tropes i think that everyone likes you know, like said, tournament arcs and stuff. But at the same time, it's like, I still really like what they're doing there. But when you have series like Chainsaw Man that are just so against the grain, I think they just does spectacularly. And I, I really like that about it. I really like that about the series. And I, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes from here because it's, it's, it's all a mystery. And I, I mentioned in a stream the other day that I was like, I wanted to add doing like predictions for other videos like uh, or other series like Eden's Ear. And I said Chainsaw Man for a second, but I'm like, there's almost no point to that because predicting Chainsaw Man is, is, is so damn difficult because it doesn't follow any real like set formula. It, it's all just a, a roller coaster of mystery and shock. And I, I think that the fact that it just, is so toned differently than other series that it just makes it so hard to kind of like it, it, you know even attempt to uh to predict and i love that about chainsaw man i think it's a really good series i think it's proving that it's way more than the initial like anybody who probably be like don't like it uh, you know with all this crazy psychological stuff and this deeper like stuff like the fact that makima is based around the fear of human control like people like losing their um their free will is crazy like losing their ability to kind of like do things and and being controlled by others it, it's just so interesting and i really like that about chainsaw man i, th I think this is fantastic but now we gotta wait obviously we, you know this is this chapter for the week i i want to see how denji recovers um I, I i don't know exactly how it is because right now he doesn't have any allies around him 
like the only character like that he could potentially have like help bring him back is if Pochita like speaks to him from you know inside his mind and stuff and inside his heart and is able to help him get back on track. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm still curious to know for certain other characters, like the fact that maybe Aki could potentially be alive. Maybe he ended up becoming a hybrid, kind of like Denji. Who knows if Reze is still alive? She was a, you know, she was a hybrid, kind of like De the same as Denji, but we don't know the exact rules on how to kill them. Um, so there's. There's, there's a lot of questions on that. Uh, maybe you have to kill... Maybe you have to take out the contract in order to kill a hybrid. And maybe it's not even destroying their heart. It's, you have to have the contract destroyed. That would make sense. And that's uh, that would kind of like obviously align with what Makima's doing. So that would that would explain if like how Reze is alive if so. And then maybe the, the Katana dude could be alive. And they could end up teaming up to fight Makima. And you know uh, that'd be a really cool. I would really like that if it's like... Aki became a hybrid, and Denji gets Reze, and maybe even the Katana Devil, and is able to unite up to go against Minkima. I think that'd be really, really interesting and really cool, and I'd love to see how that uh, would go down. But, anyway, for right now, deep in depression, we're gonna have to wait. We gotta, we, we gotta just hold out the... the chapter and figure out, like, what's next on, on, on Denji's, like, sad depression crippling adventure pretty much like it's just it's gonna be great in the long run but like stuff like this is just painful and i, I can't wait for more but anyway other than that comment below thumbs up the from the like like ah, thumbs up the people from the like button subscribe button and check out my other videos but other than that i appreciate everyone's already subscribed and i thank you all for listening bye